Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I begin, if anyone's wondering why Jeff Hewitt is dressed like Colin Epsworth, uh, <laughs> the, the reason is there was a sale at Jeans West today, <laughs> and my girlfriend loves me, so thank you, she's here. <laughs> So guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell a story, if, if that's okay, it's going to take five minutes. No. Uh, now, I appreciate Infinite Jest isn't normally uh, like a Perth storytelling night, like barefaced stories, but uh, just think of this as barefaced stories with punchlines and wit. <laughs> so this is a story about a master and a student, which reminds me of the famous story of the uh, Zen master Ma Zhu, or as uh, Paulie Walnuts from the, the Sopranos would say, Ma Tuzu. Um, now, Ma Zhu was legendarily grumpy, he would uh, hit his students and yell at them. So the story goes, one day a student approached Ma Zhu and said, Ma Zhu, what should I meditate on? And Ma Zhu responded by throwing the student out a second story window. <laughs> jumping out the window after him, sitting on his chest and saying, got it? Have you got it now, motherfucker? So, this is my story about getting thrown out of a window by a comedy master you guys may have heard of called Doug Stanhope. <laughs> so, <laughs> some of you may have seen, did, did, did any of you got hipsters see Doug Stanhope? Yeah. yeah, cool. Did you go to the Tuesday show or the Wednesday show? Wednesday show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I know. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell the story. So, I went to the Tuesday show. I did not go to the Wednesday show. Now what happened was, uh, and this is the first time I've ever done this, and uh, it's probably going to be the only time. <laughs> uh, I went to the Tuesday show because I'm a huge fan, okay? And bear in mind, leading up to the Tuesday show, I did what a lot of uh, comedians, desperate needy comedians did. I messaged Stan Hope uh, through his website. I said, hey man, do you want to do my podcast? Uh, do you need a support act? Uh, in fact, I even said, I, I said, Doug, I, I know that my friend Sean Conway is uh, supporting you on Tuesday night. Uh, but don't get him to support you on Wednesday night because he has full-blown AIDS. He's, <laughs> he's not going to be able to make it, you know? His health is dodgy. I got no reply, and that was fine. I didn't even, uh, expect any reply. And so I thought, I've got to learn from the master. So what I did, I went to the Tuesday show and I wrote out his sentence. Just key words, you know? Like, I didn't write out the whole fucking joke because I can't write that fast. So, for example, he did a joke about buskers and how being entertained against your will is like rape. So I wrote, buskers rape, you know? Um, and, I, and, you know, it was for my own educational purposes. I like to learn from the greats. But what happened was, Tuesday night after the show, I made the faithful decision to upload Doug Stanhope's set list to Facebook. Uh, and normally that wouldn't have been a thing in itself. And I uploaded it because some of my nerdy friends wanted to see it. But what I did was, and I didn't even think about it, I, I, tugged, uh, I tagged Doug Stanhope, because I'm Facebook friends with him. So I tagged him, not thinking he'd, he'd fucking notice, you know, because Doug has 5,000 Facebook friends and 16,000 people who follow him. And I thought, there's no way he's going to fucking see this. So anyway, flash forward to Wednesday night. I'm emceeing at the Laugh Resort, and uh, Doug Stanhope was weighing heavily on my mind, so I, I opened my Laugh Resort set with a few uh, jokes about, about Doug Stanhope. I said, uh, yeah, guys, I saw one of the best comedians in the world last night. Uh, and then I said that Doug asked me to, uh, to support him at the Wednesday show. And, and I said, thank you, Doug, that's very flattering, but I need to MC for 15 people at the Laugh Resort, so <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. And, and I also said how I wrote out his set list, and then I had to prepare for my Laugh Resort set list, and I was fucking devastated. Like, I felt like a piece of shit because Doug is one of the best stand-up comics in the world, and I'm only ranked, like, number 10. So... <laughs> Yeah, so you know, now the reason I'm saying I, I opened the Laugh Resort set with some Doug Stanhope jokes is because, uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, Doug Stanhope opened his Wednesday show with four minutes of Jeff Hewitt jokes, <laughs> which I'm going to share with you now. <laughs> uh, because the thing is, guys, I wasn't there at the Wednesday show, but one of my friends, well, one of my friends were actually, and one of them happened to record it. <laughs> So I was able to transcribe this thing word for fucking word, and I tell you, man, it, it's surreal having one of your heroes uh, roast the shit out of you, and uh, just killing in front of a room full of strangers, and on top of that, hearing all your friends laugh, I recognised Sean Choice, 
Sean Conway, Sarah Young, TN, just all laughing at my expense. So, this is how Doug Stanhope opened his Wednesday show. This fucking cunt, he's a comedian, Jeff Hewitt. Do you fucking know this guy? He put on Facebook my entire set list. He wrote it out beat for beat. He actually mentioned, at that point, he put out his reading glasses. I woke up in such a fucking rage today. Yeah, he's doing a show somewhere tonight. I wanted to fucking cancel this show and go to his show. I wanted to fucking cancel this show and go to his show and burn his dumb punchlines. I don't know, I saw he was listed as the MC for this dumb show somewhere else. And he goes, he's been crushing it for 10 years. Oh, and you're still MCing? You're probably not crushing it. <laughs> So if there's anyone who's writing out my entire set list, Jeff Hewitt is what I started with and I'll continue to call back to. I was going to write to him, but I didn't want to acknowledge him at all. I was so furious. Like, what comic would do that to another comic? And then just write to him, hey, I'm going to go see Gone Girl tonight. Could you give me every plot point throughout the movie? <laughs> so there's no surprises whatsoever? Do you understand comedy is magic without the ta-da? It just sounds like it's fucking off the top of your head, but it's not. That's how you craft it to make it sound spontaneous. Unless some cunt like Jeff Hewitt, <laughs> some fucking zero, gives me something new to say. This is the nerdiest thing I've ever done. Because that's what I wrote. I said, this is the nerdiest thing I've ever done. This is the nerdiest thing I've ever done when I wrote out Doug Stanhope's entire set list because look at all the topics he covers. Yeah. Except you, now you. <laughs> and, and look, I won't read the whole thing. He goes on. He, he, you know, he makes a fair point. You know, uh, touche to uh, to to one of the greats. Uh, he goes on. Uh, you fucking have no idea. You will never make it. <laughs> And then, helpfully, some random male audience member yells out, No one here has heard of the cunt. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Tracy. <laughs> and, uh, and so he goes on and on, he goes on this rant, and towards the end he goes, Fuck Jeff Hewitt. If you know Jeff Hewitt, he can put that on his resume, on his bio. Doug Stanhope says, Fuck that fucking loser cunt. <laughs> And, I mean, do you know how surreal it is to have one of your heroes roast you? It, it's like, it's like Manfred Young being roasted by Liberace, you know? it's, And hearing all your friends laugh, and, and, you know, people talk about the cliche of mixed emotions, and honestly, this is, you know, Wednesday night, because, you know, of course my friends were messaging me like, oh my god, you got burnt. <laughs> like, Sean Conway sent me a three-word text, which was, holy shit, bro. <laughs> It's fucking surreal, but yeah, it's probably the only time in my life I can remember I had genuine mixed emotions. I felt simultaneously honoured and fucking mortified. <laughs> um, anyway, so Doug Stanhope, he did a callback to me during the show, and then this was his closer. He goes, uh, is that a closer? All right, I love you guys. Perth, you really are my favourite. Thank you for the drinks. Thank you for coming out. And fuck Jeff Hewitt. <laughs> So um, I was trying to think of a way to end this story. Uh, uh, a few things, I guess. First of all, um, so yeah, you know, Wednesday night was the last resort. Uh, I got back to my car, it was wheel clamped. <laughs> yeah, and so the wheel clamp fee, fee was $150. It was more than what I got MC in at the last resort, which Doug Stanhope gave me shit about. Uh, my friend Sean told Stanhope that I got wheel clamped and he laughed. Uh, but yeah, I guess the postscript, I sent an apology to Doug that night. He wrote back, he was very gracious, and he said, um, he said, I know only for a paranoid, mo know that I only gave a fuck for a paranoid morning minute. And he said, any mileage you can get out of this on stage is gold. And <laughs> clearly it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, I guess, so look, it all ended up nicely. Uh, I've got the recording. Um, but I guess, you know, the upside is I now have a fantastic, uh, post a quote for my Fringe World show, uh, uh, V for Vagina, and I think the quote I'm going to use is, 
uh, I wanted to fucking cancel this show and go to his show. Dot dot dot. Fuck Jeff Hewitt. <laughs> Doc Stanhope. <laughs>